Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. Uh, for those that showed up to the stream uh, on Saturday, uh, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a great build. I honestly wish I was able to fly that thing. I think I might have been able to get some more air blades on it. I was thinking about it. I had the upper flight deck. I never did actually do any testing with these things to see if they can have something above and below and still work. I have made crafts that have flipped over on me because I had the blades on the bottom and it was still working. So I have tried doing a test where I had it completely closed in, but it wasn't enough to do one. So I'll have to investigate that one. I think I have an idea of doing some testing with it. Uh, I don't know what the weight of that thing is, but I kind of figure I would need about 1500 of these, which is about half of what we had. So. That was different. We're definitely going to revisit it once uh, Crane Wells is talking about adding larger versions of the air blades and the hover pads, just like the wheels. Um, I'm hoping that they're going to have a lot more torque. Uh, they're also definitely going to have a lot less lag because with 700 of these things running, oh, I'm starting to feel it big time. Uh, I've also gotten into the habit of turning all my crafts off when I'm not using them. I left this one on, but that's besides the point because I was using it. But, you know, you get, oh, I did turn it off. But you get 700 of these actually spinning, and it's it adds up. But I had an idea for today, and it's something I was actually thinking about when I was working on Rivet there. That's how I got the idea for Medusa. But I thought about uh, using the, the central grid control, which is how we can control everything. I want to see if I can zoom out a little more. No. But uh, trying to use that to create a, a remotely controlled vehicle using a tether or umbilical or whatever. I know it's not technically RC because RC is actually radio control. But why can't we control a vehicle that's on a cable? And as you can see, I ran a, ran a power line out here uh, just because I want to try to avoid using the generators. I got the power plant over there. I'm going to probably put a few more levels on that thing. We'll, maybe we'll actually turn that to like a nuclear power plant build to get like 30 or 40 Maybe uh, 50 generators in there, all hooked up to one wire and powering the whole base. Speaking of powering the base, let me get a third person here. And I'll just shut that off. So what I want to do is I want to set up basically a pole that's going to come across and it's going to have something similar to rivet there. Actually, no. We're going to do it differently. We're going to... We're going to lay it flat like I was doing with the snake. But every connection is going to have its own air blade. So what I'm going to use is use the hover mode to actually lift the cable up off the ground or tether or chain or whatever you want to call it. And that is going to be not only carrying the power using switchboards, and I'll probably have a fair few, maybe get, extend it out to that rock maybe, and then have like six air blades to lift it because I know that one can only lift whatever section I had over there. And then at the end, I'll put a rotating plate on at the end of it. And of course, the hinges will be going X and Y, so it's like a U-joint. And I'll stick a little rover at the bottom, and we'll drive it around, push the ball around, do, we'll go over some ramps and stuff like that. And yeah, that's what we'll do. So let's begin. <laughs>
All right, there she is. Uh, this is actually a second attempt I tried doing this. Uh, originally, I had 16 links in between each uh, hook. We'll call it. We'll call them sky hooks. Why not? Uh, but one air blade wasn't enough to lift them all, so I th ended up moving up to 18. I decided to stick three in there just because, and this is the reason why. And that's to keep it off the ground. So I have gone ahead and I have set up a little little buggy here. We're going to have to drop the hover on that a little bit. Made a little bit of a ramp and a little ball to push around. So let's see how well it does. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. And now... Look at that. I can drive the buggy around. And it should pull the cable with it. It still wants to lift up a little bit. I probably could have had a little more slack on the last one there. But there we have it. That ramp could have been a lot bigger too. And I probably could have had the platform somewhere else. But there we go. We have complete remote control. And as you can see, I put a rotating plate on there. So it keeps going. The problem is you don't have a lot of range. Probably could tighten that suspension up a little bit. Ah, there we go. That is so cool. I'm trying to think of a way of setting up a, you know, almost like a air, like a umbilical system. Like if I want to try to create something large that flies, for instance, like the helicarrier, not using a good example on that, but, you know, if I don't have to take generators with me on something big that I'm flying, it would come in handy to be able to, hold on, screenshot, uh, but yeah, it'd be nice to be able to have, like, little, little switchboard points that float up in the air that you could link to, because I know they only go 40 blocks, and once you come disconnected from it, if you go back and range from it, it doesn't connect again. I already did do that test. I was do, t doing that test with the generators before the new electricity. And no, they do not reconnect. And the switchboards don't reconnect either, which would be handy, right? You could have a just have a buggy with a switchboard on it, drive all the way around your base, not have to worry about hooking it up to different switchboards and for, and whatnot. But anyways, uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.